How's it going, everybody? Um, let me know if you can hear me or not. You should be able to. We'll get started in just a second. See if anybody else comes in. Okay, perfect. You can't hear me. Good. Okay. Um, so once again, if you have any questions uh, as we go, just type them into the chat and I'll be able to see those. And then I'll answer them uh, as they come up. Um, let's see, anything else that we got? Okay, we got one more. Join us. Give me one more second, then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so as you can see today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, making time for exercise. Um, so first, I'm going to point you to the files in the bottom right corner. Um, so the the making time for exercise handout is just a copy of the PowerPoint. So if you guys want to save that or look through that, you can. And then the bottom on the ACSM exercise time finder handout is, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but basically that's a good resource for you guys to use. So. Um, We'll first start with just going through the recommendations for exercise. Um, the main um, main things we want to cover are aerobic exercise or cardio activity. Um, so our goals for that are 150 minutes per week, um, resistance training two days a week, um, and that can be that's ideally non-consecutive. So we want to make sure we're not doing uh, legs on Monday and then legs again on Tuesday. We want to at least give a day in between uh, that the resistance training. Uh, the next one is flexibility, so that should be three days a week roughly. Um, balance training, three days a week, and relaxa relaxation training, and that should be every day, um, at least at some point throughout your day. You should be taking some time just to breathe, take a deep breath, relax a little bit. Um, so when I list them all out like that, it ends up feeling like a lot. Um, a lot of the common, the, probably the most common thing that we hear uh, is, I have no time, or I don't know when I'm supposed to do this, I don't have the ability, I don't have the time. Um, but there's a lot of different ways we can break this exercise up and make it a lot more manageable for you guys. Um, so the first one, first option, uh, just kind of, that I, I like to recommend people first, um, is a short workout. So you see that on there. So if you think about that 150 minutes of exercise, um, and you break that down into um, 10 minute bounce, so 150 minutes divided by five days, so Monday through Friday, that's 30 minutes a day. You break that 30 minutes a day into 10 minutes, that's three times a day, five days a week. So what that ends up being is you can do 10 minutes in the morning before work, 10 more minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes after work. And that's your 150 minutes right there. So there, it's really manageable if you break it down that way. Um, and what that short workout can be, really anything that gets that heart rate up, Anything that gets you breathing a little heavy or sweating just a little bit. So that can be just uh, doing jumping jacks and then um, some sit-ups or just even walking quickly on a treadmill or elliptical or um, swimming might not be feasible in 10 minutes. But uh, little things like that around your house that you can get done um, counts. Same thing with at work. So if you're at lunch at work, you aren't going to be able to run to the gym or anything like that, but you can... Uh, take a quick walk around work, or if you work at the hospital, you can walk down a couple hallways and back, and that's 10 minutes right there. Um, and then same thing with after work. You can do it from your from your office to your car. Make sure you make that just a little longer route to get 10 minutes. Or um, as soon as you get home, just do something really quick, either with the kids or before the kids get home or before you have to start making dinner. Um, little, little things like that, you can squeeze in 10 minutes here or 10 minutes there. And that makes that cardio number a lot more manageable. Um, another option or a way to make time is getting up early. Um, this is not one that I'm actually good at, so I, I recommend it, but I am not good at it. My wife is very good at it, um, and she makes time to actually get up before work and do exercise. But I really like my mornings, and I like having a cup of coffee before work. So by all means, get up early, use that time, because that's time that usually the kids aren't awake. You don't have many other responsibilities other than making sure you get to work on time. So it's definitely a good one to try. Um, and it helps 
it helps make a habit because if you have that same, if you get to work at nine every morning, you know, if you get up at 6.30, you'll have plenty of time to do that every single day. So it makes it a little bit easier to make consistency, make it consistent. Um, the next way to kind of help with uh, finding time for this exercise is uh, make yourself accountable, accountable to it. Um, one option is just find somebody at work or find somebody um, in your life, your spouse, um, or just a friend, just to partner with. So uh, a lot of people have Fitbits, and you can do different challenges on those Fitbits and challenge each other to see who got more steps in the day. Another one is just saying, okay, we're going to go to the gym today at 5.30. I will see you there. Um, it's a lot harder to break um, that promise if someone is literally standing at the gym waiting for you to get there. Um, now, if you just tell yourself, I'm going to go, it's a lot easier to find things to do and not actually go to the gym. Um, the other one is uh, that I like to do is be motivated by money. So if you pay money to something, whether it's a gym membership, whether it's um, signing up for a race or paying someone to watch your children, you're a lot more likely to actually go to and do what you said you're going to do when you're losing money out of your pocket if you don't. So paying for an expensive gym membership or even playing to fitness, which is only $10 a month, is something that motivates me just to be like, well, I'm paying for it. I might as well at least use it. Um, and same thing with races. Um, I've signed up for several races and it's just it's good to have something on the calendar. Like I'm working towards this and it's also a good motivator because if I don't train and do this. I'm losing 60, 70 bucks out of my pocket for nothing. Um, and I don't like losing money. So um, those are good accountable ways or ways to keep yourself accountable. Um, so the next one is uh, what I mentioned at the very beginning. I know some of you guys have joined since I mentioned it, but on the bottom right is the ACSM Exercise Time Finder handout. Um, so what I really challenge you to do is just to take uh, the next couple of days um, and starting basically right now, write down basically every second of your day um, and see how you're using that time. Because what you'll find is a lot of times there are spots in your day that you have 20 minutes, you have 15 minutes. And that, once again, that's where we can add in just walking or add in doing something very simple before uh, you make dinner or while you're waiting for dinner to cook in the oven or little things like that where we a lot of times just use that time to sit down or relax or rest or do something um, and sometimes that's necessary but sometimes you've got 20 minutes to kill maybe instead of watching your tv show or instead while watching your tv show do some activity walk in place jumping jacks do some resistance training uh, little things like that can really boost like your productivity as far as exercise goes. So um, I encourage you to uh, pull that up, actually do it, fill it out. So just track your time for the next couple of days of where what are you actually doing um, and when you're doing it. So if you're at you know meetings from nine to eleven thirty, write that, and then you have a break from eleven thirty to twelve thirty. Okay, what did you do during that break? Did you sit at your desk? Did you um, read a book, did you go out for lunch, what, whatever it was, write that down and then you just keep doing that for a couple of days and you'll be able to see, one, where you spend your time and two, where you prioritize your time. And as I mentioned, so prioritizing is important. So we all know that we do the things that we prioritize. Um, so if we prioritize uh, reading every night, instead of going to bed early, you're going to stay up reading. Um, or if you prioritize um, exercise, you're more likely to spend your free time, more likely to spend your money, and more likely to actually do exercise. Um, so those are things that you just need to think about. So um, spending time with family is definitely important. Making healthy food choices is important. Um, even some self-care, like getting a manicure, is important. But if you prioritize exercise, and even just once once again, two or three times a week, just set aside time. Hey, I'm going to do exercise this week. I'm going to do exercise at this time. Just put it in your schedule. This is when I'm going to do exercise. Put that as a priority first, and you just let your family and your work know, like, hey, at this time, I'm going to be doing exercise. If you need me, wait until that's over, and then I can answer any questions or go pick up the kids or whatever else you need to do throughout your week. Um, but once again, making it, it a priority is kind of the first step. Because if you aren't making exercise a priority, odds are you're not going to be successful. And you're not going to actually do what we recommend. Um, and what we recommend 
Um, and I'll mention this again because we've had people join later. Um, so 150 minutes of cardio per week, um, two days a week of strength training, um, two to three days a week of flexibility, strength, and uh, or flexibility um, and stretching is what I meant to say. And then uh, two days uh, a week of uh, balance training, which a lot of times it goes hand in hand with strength training. Um, and then daily uh, relaxation. So um, once again, I, I broke down 150 minutes of exercise can be broken down to anything into 10 to 15 minute blocks. And then those add up easily to 150 minutes. And then two days a week of strength training, um, that can be done. Um, once again, we don't want to do those two days in a row. So that all, all it takes is about 20 to 40 minutes at most two days a week, and you've done all of the uh, resistance training uh, recommendations that we ask. Um, so as I mentioned, these are some other ways that you can kind of find time for that exercise. So lunch breaks are a great time where a lot of times you'll either just be sitting at your desk or watching a TV show or reading a book. Um, if you have the ability, take a lap around your office or walk down the hallways or even just standing. <laughs> Um, sometimes you even have enough time to go to the gym. If there's a gym nearby or gym at your work, um, you can go to the gym, work out for 30 minutes, and still have time to shower and come back to work. Um, working out with your kids. So if you do have the responsibility of picking up your kids and washing your kids every night, um, one, they need exercise too. And two, they're a great source of exercise. Um, chasing your kids around uh, can count as cardio, uh, playing games with them, doing activities, walk, going to the park with them, um, engaging them in the sports that they enjoy. Those are excellent ways for you to find extra steps throughout the day, extra minutes of cardio. Um, and then multitasking. Um, I know a lot of people that we have uh, are on conference calls a lot in their office. You can do squats or stretches while you're on a conference call and no one will ever know um, unless they're in the office with you. But if you're just on the phone, no one will know if you're standing or sitting. Um, and it doesn't really matter as long as you are paying attention. Um, second is one that I like to do a lot is watch TV while I do either resistance training, stretching, or sometimes even cardio. Um, I'll pull up uh, fitnessblender.com. I'll pull up a video. I'll do that video on one screen and I'll turn on uh, the TV and watch a um, watch a video or watch a TV show while I'm doing that. So you end up getting 30 minutes of activity and you don't even notice because you're watching your show that you enjoy. Um, also do that at the gym. So, uh, for example, my wife has a TV show that she only watches when she's at the gym. So if she wants to watch that show, she goes, has to go to the gym to watch it. Um, and just little things like that just really help make exercise more enjoyable, make exercise um, more fun. And frankly, you just sometimes you can kind of zone out and not even remember that you're getting exercise. Um, um, okay, so... Kind of the next uh, thing are just the goal for you guys is to find activities and exercises that you enjoy. Because um, if we tell you to do exercise and you don't enjoy the exercise, after you leave us, you're most likely not going to continue to do that exercise. Um, so what you really need to focus on and f are, are, are to find things that you enjoy or find aspects of exercise that you do enjoy. Um, so I know some people really love yoga. They don't like strength training, but they love yoga. Okay, great. Do yoga. Um, we still want you to do strength training as much as you can, um, but sometimes the ability to do yoga outweighs the kind of the dislike of um, strength training. Or if you really like group classes, or if you like doing um, certain cycle classes or different things at the Y or at the gym, do those. Whatever you prefer, um, whatever you find is motivating and making it more um, a priority for you to get there and do it, that's what you want to focus on. Um, we want to hit all those goals, as I mentioned, but um, if you know, you're know you either going to sit on the couch or you're going to go to the gym with uh, and do a group class, we'd rather you go and do that group class than sit on the couch and not do anything. Um, and a lot of the things that people report that they like about exercise are really how it makes you feel. Um, for me, I know I don't exercise, I can be grouchy and crabby, and uh, I know my wife appreciates when I do when I exercise because I'm just, uh, I'm a lot more relaxed, I'm a lot more energized, and I have a lot more uh, patience for people. Um, so you'd be surprised what one or two uh, bouts of exercise will really do to just your mood. 
and how you feel and how you relate to others. Um, so this one's a little bit harder to see, but it's essentially it's the no excuses chart. So these are basically the most common reasons why people don't do exercise. Um, and this is what we hear in, our, in the clinic basically every day um, <laughs> to some degree with every person we talk to. So top ones, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy. I'm just not motivated. It costs too much. Uh, I'm sick or hurt. Um, let's see. I feel awkward when I exercise. I might get hurt. It's not safe. Um, there's no one to exercise with me. So these are all really common um, excuses, if you want to call them, for not doing exercise. Some of them are very valid, um, but a lot of them can be overcome with just either a little bit of creativity, a little bit of prioritizing, and um, just honestly just forcing yourself and motivating yourself to do it. Um, so some of these, um, as I mentioned, don't have enough time. That's one way we cover today. Little ways, just find times in those days to squeeze an exercise. Um, I don't have enough energy. Once again, doing exercise energizes you. You feel almost always better after exercise, um, energy-wise, than before you do it. Um, that's the hardest part of starting exercise is just getting off the couch and going to do it. Once you start, you always, almost always feel better, um, have, tend to have more energy and just feel um, more invigorated and ready to go. Um, it costs too much. Um, that's another one we hear a lot. Um, and that's, I mean, one, it's a valid, it can be very valid, but we're not asking you to pay 40, 50 bucks a month for a gym. Um, if you want a gym, Planet Fitness is about $150 a year. Uh, so 10 bucks a month plus an annual fee. So 150 bucks a year, most likely you've made a purchase that you didn't need to in the last few months. That was $150. So um, just prioritizing that. You just paid for a whole year of gym membership, um, and they have everything that you could ever need there. Um, other ways, like as I mentioned, fitnessblender.com is uh, uh, just the free exercise videos on YouTube or on their website. Um, you don't need any equipment. It costs zero dollars uh, a year, and you can do those anytime as long as you have access to internet. Um, and then a lot of other body weight uh, bands are about. You can buy a whole set of bands for resistance training. That's about twenty dollars. Um, we have them in our nutrition shop here, or you can buy them online for around 20 bucks, and you can do every resistance exercise that you would need to um, with a set of bands for about 20 bucks. Um, and once again, there are a lot of body weight activities and things uh, that you can do that are free. Um, you only need your body. So um, let's just say there are lots of excuses that we can make and will make, but in the grand scheme of things, um, if we just prioritize it and make it a habit and say, put it in our schedule, say, hey, I'm going to do exercise today, or this is when I'm going to find time to do exercise, you can get it done. Um, may not always be the most enjoyable, but um, if we are trying to make this a priority of losing weight and um, getting in better shape, then this is what we might have to go through. Um, so this is just a quote, um, common denominator of success, the secret of success Success of every man who has ever been successful lies in the fact that he formed the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. Um, it's it's pretty. It's a very truthful uh, statement. If you can make a habit of getting up early before work, you're gonna be successful. Um, if you can make a habit of um, finding time every lunch hour to go on a walk or go to the gym, you're most likely gonna be more successful than someone that. Um, just like, oh, I don't really have time today. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Um, I don't really want to do it. That's just, it. you're not going to be success, as successful in this program or in life if you aren't willing to make some hard choices and make some prioritizing decisions with exercise. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of really easy things that you can do. Um, if you only have 10 minutes, you can do this. This is a, um, this is a strength-based Resistance, so it covers upper body, lower body, and your core. Um, you do 10, 10 to 15 of these for three different sets. Not going to take you very long at all. Um, some of them might take a little longer than others, but it's not going to take you more than 10 minutes to run through all three of these. And you'd be surprised how just doing those, how tired you're going to be and how uh, good you're going to feel afterwards. Um, so very simple once again. We want to make this as, break this down as much as we can for you guys to hit those 150 minute, two days a week goals that we have for you. Um, and really that's it. Um, 
once again, I just want to mention that ACSM Time Finder handout um, that we have. Really make that a priority just to go through and track your days and see what else you need or where do you have those time slots in your day to just get in a little bit of exercise um, and what, what are ways that you can fit in exercise even when you didn't think you could. Um, so as we mentioned, doing stuff at work while you're on a call, um, standing at your desk, taking a lap around the office. Um, and yeah, it, this is very doable. We just have to break it down. Um, so a question we have is uh, what size hand weights are good to have when walking? Um, really, really anything that's comfortable for you. Um, you don't need to be holding 10 pound weights uh, if that's going to be too hard to hold. So um, anything with, you know, one to five pounds is honestly going to be perfectly fine. Um, if you, yeah, honestly, one to five pounds would be a good size to your weights. Uh, but once again, you want to make it just comfortable for you to hold, uh, let alone uh, walk with. Um, and, but yeah, so one to five pounds would be good. Um, any other questions that you guys had about how to find time, where to break up, how to break up this exercise? Um, and one thing we mentioned, I mentioned earlier, so you need to do, so our goals are 150 minutes of cardio. We talked about that one a lot. And then two days a week of strength training. So um, sometimes people will tell me that they don't have enough time to do upper and lower body because that's what we're shooting for when we do two days of strength training. We want to do upper body and lower body on, say, Tuesday and then upper and lower body, say, on Thursday. Um, but that takes longer. So if you're doing cardio that day too, that might be a whole hour you have to spend at the gym versus like 30 minutes if you're just doing cardio. So one thing that we, is an option, is that you can break up those two days of upper body and two days of lower body. So it would look like, say, on Monday you would do upper body, Tuesday you would do lower body, and then on Thursday you'd do upper body, and Friday you'd do lower body again. Um, so that just can shorten the amount of time that you have. So if you only have 45 minutes after work, uh, each day, and you don't have enough time to do, you know, upper and lower body and get your cardio in, you can kind of, if you've got four days that you can dedicate to go to the gym after work, even if they're a shorter amount of times, so you can still get in upper and lower body twice uh, each week, splitting those up a little bit. Um, any other questions that you guys have? So that's a really good question. Um, is walking, especially up hills, considered lower body strength training? Um, it, it, it's tricky. Um, yes and no. Um, so what what we see is walking. It's, it's even if you're doing hills or doing stairs, um, it, it tends to be a cardio exercise more than a strength training exercise. Um, and we we're going to count that as a cardio exercise. Um, the only reason why is because when you're doing that, your heart rate is going to get up. Your breathing is going to get elevated. Um, which is kind of the hallmarks of cardio exercise. Um, so we're walking, even if it is up hills or things like that, it is, a, I would, we're going to call that cardio. Now, you will see over a long period of time, if you're doing a lot of that, your legs are going to be stronger due to that. So yes, it is, you are building some strength there, but in, if we were going to, if we we're just going to break this up, we were, we're going to count that as cardio, and then we still are expecting you to do some two days of lower body strength training as well. Um, but once again, you will see strength gains. You will feel your legs being stronger during that time. Um, but so once again, things like that are a little bit trickier for us uh, to, you know, call it what it is. But um, we're going to put that as cardio for us, for our purposes. Um, we got somebody typing. You have any last questions? We'll answer those, and we'll be done here in just a few minutes. Um, so, the question: is, Do you recommend doing full body strength training? Um, it, once again, I would, I would say it depends. I would say yes if you have the time to get both in on the same day, I recommend doing that. One, because less time you have to actually go to the gym, um, less days you actually have to go to the gym. Um, for me, I feel like I get a better workout when I do both combined. Um, and, but 
once again, if time is a limiting factor, so if you only have 20 minutes to do strength training at the gym or strength training at home, you might want to just do one and then the other. Um, so you might, so once again, if you only have 20 minutes a day, I might do upper body and then the next day I do low body, lower body, just to time-wise. But if you have, the, you know, 40 minutes, say both of them take you 20 minutes, if you have 40 minutes, I'd recommend just going ahead and doing both on the same day. And that way you can dedicate those other few days throughout the week for those cardio minutes. Um, it's just a little bit easier and you have less time needed to go to the gym or needed just to use the equipment at home. Um, Another question, can I do weights for the back of my arms every day, even if there's only one exercise? Um, I would recommend not. Um, we, the, uh, something that we really have to be careful of is um, giving your body time to rest. So if you're doing the same, even if it's only one exercise, if, I mean, we, so on the back of the arms, we're working with the tricep muscles. So even if we're, if we're, if we're working those tricep muscles every single day, they're not going to have as much time to rest and relax and um, basically grow um, because the body, the muscles need about 24 hours or 48 hours to heal themselves. And that's where you actually see size and strength gains is during that rest period. Um, so I would just do two sets on one day and then give yourself a day off and then do two exercises of the same muscle groups instead of doing them every single day. Um, and that, that's what I do personally. I make sure I give myself time to rest in between. Any last questions? One person typing. And once again, just uh, at the end of this, I'm going to make sure that you guys go through the survey so that way we know uh, who you are and you can get credit for showing up to class today. Um, and then lastly, those files, um, making time for exercise, that's just the copy of the PowerPoint and then the exercise time finder handout. That's, that breaks it down in a couple of days where you can plot out each hour of your day what you were doing when you were doing it. Um, so we're doing full body strength training. How uh, how many days should I wait to do it again? Um, once again, you want to give yourself 48 hours roughly. So um, I, I typically work out or do strength training on Monday, Wednesday, and sometimes on Friday. I'll make sure I do Monday, Wednesday, total body, um, and then I'll do it again on Friday. But you want to give yourself a day in between um, to let your body rest, let that body relax. So, um, yeah, so day in between. So Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Friday, Monday, Saturday even works. Um, just give yourself that day in between. Um, um, so Crystal's question, uh, referring to the Fleet Feeding Greensboro meeting this Thursday night from 536. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, um, but my most likely yes. But let me, um, let me send an email to um, uh, Glenn in Greensboro, and we can I can double check that. Um, it sh it, we should be able to still get you a discount, but um, I will make sure she lets people know, um, or that we announce how to get that discount. Um, so yeah, I will I will uh, make sure that they put that out there, um, and that she knows that people have questions about that. Um, okay, any last questions before we sign off today? Okay, well, that's it. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, if you have any questions about what we went over today, obviously if you can feel free to email me or anybody on our team that will get us, they'll get the answer for you. Um, okay, thank you. Have a great day.